Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am going to be ranking all of my single highlighters from least to most favorite. So if you want to see what comes out on top, then just keep watching. So if you recall, a few weeks ago, I uploaded a My Highlighter Collection video. And following that, I planned on doing a Ranking My Highlighters video. So it took me a little bit, but it's finally here. Now today, it is just going to be my luxury and high-end highlighters. I will eventually have a drugstore version of this as well, but we're just going to start off with the high-end and luxury today. I break them up just for my mental sanity so that I don't have to rank over 40 highlighters. So I have 21 luxury and high-end highlighters to rank for you guys today. Of course, these aren't all of my highlighters. I'm not including any highlighters that are in palettes. These are just my singleton little highlighters with the exception of like one quad. But other than that, these are my single highlighters. So let's just get into it. For the most part, looking at what's laying out right now, I really do just love the majority of my highlighter collection. That's why this is so hard because all of these are so good for their own reasons. So this is pretty tough. We're going to start off at number 21, my least favorite in my collection, and that is the Kylie Cosmetics Pressed Illuminating Powder. Now, I only have this in one shade, so this may be the reason why, but the shade Queen Drip just ain't for me. Now, for the most part, I'm ranking these, by the way, formulation-wise, so if I have multiple colors in the same formulation, I'm counting them as one. This is the only color of this formulation that I have, and I do not like this. It takes a lot of building up. It looks a little bit chunky on my skin. It just, it it doesn't pick up color, it doesn't have a smooth application, and it just doesn't look good. I really do not like this highlighter. I hope the other colors in her line are better than this one because this one is just simply not good. Moving on to number 20. Now this is a really fabulous formulation. The fault of this is on me where I bought the wrong color, but since this is the only color that I have of this highlighter, this had to go here. So this is the Danessa Myricks In Light Highlighter in the shade Heaven Scent. Like I said, the formulation on this is beautiful. I'm not the biggest loose highlighter fan though, so that also is a reason why it's pushed to the back just because I don't reach for loose highlighters on a daily basis. But this has a gorgeous gleam to it. It's just that it's too deep on me. So I don't find myself reaching for it. It's also too shiny to work as a blush highlighter. So for me, where this gets used if, if I were doing makeup on somebody with a deeper complexion, this would be stunning. But for myself, this just isn't something I can really use too often. Number 19 is the Kylie Cosmetics Loose Highlighter in Santorini. Now again, this is just another color issue, so I don't reach for it. I don't think the quality on this is bad. Uh, this was actually relatively affordable. I believe it was around the $12 to $15 price point. I have the shade Santorini, and the reason I don't like this shade is it's just too white. I think we all went through a phase where the whiter, the brighter the highlight was, you thought that that looked better, but in reality, the whiter the highlighter, the more alien-like you look, and it just doesn't look good. In the beginning, I did like this when I first had it, but as my taste has changed and grown, I prefer a more neutral highlighter on my skin tone, nothing too bright and too white, and this is just way too stark for me. Number 18 is the Lorac Illuminating Highlighter in the shade Daylight. Now, this is not a bad highlighter. This is actually quite nice, but I think this is ranking so low because I was a little bit disappointed by it. I heard a lot of good things about this formulation, so I did happen to get it on sale, I believe, during an Ulta 21 Days of Beauty, and I was so very excited because I just had heard so many amazing things, and while this is not a bad highlighter, like I said, it's a nice pretty formula. It just didn't reach up to the hype that I thought it would. To me, it's a pretty generic highlighter. There's nothing really special about it. There's nothing bad about it either, but it's just kind of there in my collection, so I don't find myself reaching for it too often. Number 17, we have the MAC Extra Dimension Skin Finish. Now, I have this in the shade Postmodernist Peach, and I absolutely love the packaging on it. From this point on, I really don't have too much negative things to say about the highlighters. They just kind of lined up where they lined up. So I really do like this one. I just feel like this one I don't find myself reaching for a lot. Something about like it's just not that pleasurable of an experience for me. Now I really like this because it's a gorgeous peach highlighter and I really don't think I have enough peach highlighters in my collection. It's just not the best formula and it's still a very nice formula. I believe this was in a monthly favorites last year so I'm not saying I don't like it. I really do like it. It's gorgeous. It's just not the best formula. 
Ulta. Moving on to number 16, I have this Persona Kelly Glow Highlighter. This is in the shade Zuma. This is a very beautiful formula. I really enjoy this highlighter. It's just not something I reach for a lot. I don't really have a reason for that. I think this formula is underrated. I really do think they have a wonderful formula and this is one that I would like to reach for now. But I mean, this is just ranking where it's ranking because I just don't use it. I have a lot. <laughs> Number 15 are the Jouer highlighters. Now these are really beautiful. I got them in a Nordstrom set on sale. So they're mini size, but there's Rose Quartz. I have Topaz, which is a bit deeper. Citrine, which was a very popular one for a while. And while I don't have too much bad to say about them, I like I said, my taste in highlighters has evolved. These are a bit too shiny and reflective for me. There's a time and a place for that, of course, in my collection and depending on my mood. But for the most part, I find it to be a bit too powdery and packing too much of a punch on my cheek where I just don't want to look like I have a metallic stripe on my face sometimes. So while the formula is nice, it blends very smoothly onto the skin. It's just not the finish lately that I've been looking for. Next up, we have the Ofra and Samantha March highlighter and this is in the Star Inspired, which is two pre-existing colors in the Ofra line. Again, Ofra has a beautiful formula, but it's just a color that is a bit too stark for my preferences at the current moment. This is still a highlighter that I do reach for quite frequently. It's just I have to use a very, very light hand. I don't like how white it looks on my complexion. So that's kind of where this is. It's a very nice formula and I do enjoy the color. Just don't reach for those white highlighters very often. Then we have the Jaclyn Cosmetics Loose Highlighter. I have mine in the shade Bomb and this is a gorgeous golden -y shade. So the reason why this is ranking higher is because it's not like those super white highlighters that I'm talking about and I love a nice smooth golden formula. So this is ranking in the middle because I don't reach for loose highlighters a lot, but this is a really nice formula. Her highlight quad, by the way, super bomb. She has a very nice, super beaming highlight formula. And like I said, even though I'm not as into those, I can appreciate a very nice formula. She did a very good job with that, and she did a very good job with these. Next up, we have one of my most coveted highlighters, even though it's not ranked toward the very top because I don't reach for it a lot. This is the Chanel Eclat 2 is a illuminating powder and this is just kind of super fancy and I love it for that. I don't reach for it a ton. I like like a bake gelée kind of highlight formula looking at my collection. Those are the ones that tend to be ranking towards the top. This is not baked gelée at all. It's a powder so a lot of the powder collects onto the brush which just applies too much highlighter than I want nowadays. Like it's so funny because if I had ranked my highlighters even a year and a half ago the rankings would totally be mismatched but because I like that hard pressed baked gelée formula where you don't get a lot of fallout, you don't get a lot of powder build up, this one does Kind of pile on the powder which at the current moment is not what i'm into breaking in at number 11 we have the artist couture diamond glow powders i have two one in illuminati this one's not my favorite it's a bit too bright for me but summer haze is a really gorgeous golden highlight and i really enjoy his loose highlighter formula i think he has the best his formula is just so fine so i don't really mind that it's loose it's very nice there are little like diamond glittery bits not like glitter glitter but there is just something special about the shine that that these have and again I don't use these as much as I should because it's just so easy to grab a pressed highlighter but if I'm feeling loose or I'm feeling like I want a little bit of extra pizzazz I do love the artist couture formula a lot. Ranking in at number 10 is my MAC soft and gentle mineralized skin finish. I love this highlighter. This is the perfect everyday highlighter for me. It's the perfect color maybe a bit brighter I guess compared to what I like but again it's just so soft you can really blend it into how you like it. It looks very seamless on the skin and you can get a very natural highlight but you can build it up to get something beaming. So I just like the versatility that this has and just how you're able to kind of build up to what intensity you want of your highlighter for the day. Number nine are the classic Becca, what do they call these? Shimmering Skin Perfectors. They just have an amazing formula. Just like the MAC, you really can kind of customize how you want. You can just put a little bit and it blends into the skin seamlessly for a glow from within kind of look. Or you can get a banging bomb super bright highlighters. I think typically when I want a brighter highlighter, I'm very inclined to dig in for the Becca's because they just have such a good formula. I love Prosecco Pop. 
pop. I mean, I still have my coveted champagne pop. It was so popular for so long for a reason. I like a nice champagne highlighter, but I think my ultimate favorite is probably opal. I have this tiny little bit because you don't need that much highlighter. This is like the perfect tone on my skin. It's just not too bright, but it really gives me a glow without being white. Number eight has to be the Fenty Beauty Kilowatt formulas. She has a lot of different variations in her line. Like I don't like the diamondy ones. I don't like the super gold glittery ones, but I just do like my Kilowatt highlighter in Mean Money and Hustla Baby. I think she has a very nice formula where it's not like the hard pressed baked gelée, but it's not super powdery either. It's a very nice in between. I love the color line that she has. And overall, I just think she has a very smoothing formula. It looks very smooth on the texture on your skin and it blends in like a dream. So she has a banging formula with a lot of different colors to choose from. Number seven is my Tom Ford Skin Illuminating Powder Duo. Now I do have a couple of duos in here just because that's where I keep them in my single highlighter drawer, but I really do like this. I think it's ranking a little bit higher. I'm being a little bit biased because it is Tom Ford, but this really is a very smoothing and simple highlighter. You don't get too much powder from it. This shade right here is actually more reflective than the top one. The top one's going to give you a more natural highlight, whereas this one's going to give you the reflective one, and I like having that option, and I just think it's really fancy, and that's kind of why it's ranking higher. I use it a ton. It's my Tom Ford baby. When I'm feeling bougie, I'm grabbing for my Tom Ford, and apparently I feel bougie a lot. And then moving on to a different formula from Tom Ford. This is number six, and it's the Sheer Highlighting Duo. Now, these are quite beaming. This is Reflex Guilt, and even though I say I like a more subtle one, I just love the quality and the finish of this reflex guilt. I love these colors so much. You have a little bit more of a pinky one and then more of a champagne one, or I guess more golden. And they're just like thick but in a good way. And the most important thing to me when it comes to highlighter is how smooth it looks on the skin. Of course, it's a highlight, so if you do have some texture or milk bumps, they're going to show through, but the way that it blends into the skin and how smoothly it blends into the skin is what I look for most, and Tom Ford does a really nice job of that. five is my Bobbi Brown Shimmer Highlighting Powder. This is Pink Glow. This was actually my very first highlighter, and I love it. I love digging into the more pink side when I want something a little bit closer to my skin tone, but you can go in towards the more white side for a nice beam. But this is that kind of baked formula, so you don't get a lot of fallout. You can really customize how much you want, how much glow you want, and I just think it's an overall very nice formula. This is probably my most used highlighter. Looking at everything, like even though I can't really say too much about this highlighter, I just use it all the time and I really like it. This is a newer one for me, but I've really been in love with it. So this is the Givenchy Tante Couture Shimmer Powder. This is ranking in at number four, by the way, and I just think this has such a refined formula. Now, it's not a super beaming highlight, so that's probably why it's ranking so high. I love the detail on the actual powder itself, and it's just like a nice subtle glow, and it blends into the skin very seamlessly, and not a lot of people talk about these Givenchy highlighters. They really are super nice. Ranking in at number three. I love this highlighter. This is from Milk Makeup and it's the Flex Highlighter. This is in the shade Lit and this is a very beaming highlight, but I love that about this. I love how smooth it looks on the skin. This is probably one of the most smoothing highlighters that I own. One of the most easy to blend into the skin and work into the skin. It just goes in like butter. It gives you that super beaming highlight while still looking like it's like a glow from within, like a super glow from within. This is an incredible highlight for me. I highly recommend you check it out. It's amazing. <sighs> Moving in at number two, we have my Dior Luminizers. They have a few different formulations. I'm just going to count these together as like the nude ones. So my first one is the Rosy Vibes that I have. Both of these are pink because I love pink highlighters and I also have Hollow Pink. This one is a different formula but I'm just going to count these two together. But Dior has my absolute favorite highlighting formula ever just all across the board and they just have everything that I need. You can get a heavy glow. They're very shiny. You can still get a natural glow though. They blend into the skin beautifully and they're just a highlight formula that I find myself reaching for time and time again. All right, five Finally, moving on to number one. This is a quad. They're just so small and cute that I keep them in my individual highlighter drawer. And they're so good. 
you guys again from Dior like I said they have my favorite formula and this is the backstage glow face palette so there are two I personally prefer just the original universal this gold shade is amazing I like mixing in the pink and then you have a white when you want an extra beam to the face but don't sleep on number two which is glitz this one I also really really love just like I said for the other Dior highlights they have everything that I need I love the colors in here and they're just my favorite and I know you're thinking about well where's your hourglass stuff those are in palettes if my hourglass stuff was in here it would be ranked in the top five for sure I don't know about number one because I love my Dior highlighters these are the best I recommend these to everybody best highlighters I've ever used that is all I have for today's video that was me of course ranking all of my luxury and high-end highlighters make sure you guys keep an eye out for when I do my drugstore slash affordable highlighters and let me know if you enjoyed it what is your number one favorite high-end and luxury brand I want to know so if you aren't subscribed to my channel already I would absolutely love it if you would consider taking the time to do so and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys have a good one.